Let me tell you what just happened in your brain when you clicked on this video. The anticipation of most types of rewards increases the level of dopamine in the brain, and it functions as a neurotransmitter and neuromodulator. Dopamine is produced by neurons located in the midbrain. The activation of dopamine producing generates electrical signals that to the travel target along the axons. Of dopamine release that is broadcast. I know, things get complicated fast. In April of 2015, Reddit launched a joke game called The Button, which counted down from 60 seconds until it reached zero. However, any time any user pressed the button, it reset to 60 seconds. The button reached zero after a couple months, but it had become quite clear that instant gratification and curiosity play huge roles in our day-to-day -day lives. Social media also uses the red button ideas by spamming you with notifications and using colorful badges to bring your eyes to them. Despite your knowledge of the unimportance of the badge, you nonetheless click on it, intrigued to find out more about the post. That's one way social media is designed to be addictive. The red button trope is far from a mere part of science fiction. It plays through us daily prevalent in our everyday lives as it pulls the strings to what actions we take and uses reverse psychology into tempting us to take actions. If agencies make a lot of money using this strategy on us, why can't we use it ourselves for motivation? If they can motivate ourselves to do something, we can absolutely do the same thing. For any of us, success in any endeavor is very closely related to how much focus we can bring to that endeavor. And the reward system, you start to realize, is entirely internal. No one's coming along and cramming dopamine in your ear or dripping it in your brain. It's all internal. If you can reward the effort process, you really start to feel joy and low levels of, of excitement in the effort process. That's that buffering of adrenaline. That's that feeling like, yes, I've got a lot of adrenaline in my system, but I'm on the right path. Mm. It feels good to walk up this hill, so mm -hmm. to speak. And when you start to bring the, those neural circuits together, you really start to create a whole set of circuits that are designed to be exported to any behavior you want. To trace the source of motivation, let's begin in the brain, where neurotransmitters spark chemical messages to keep us alert and on task. Neurotransmitters carry chemical messages that play out in your brain and affect the rest of your body. One neurotransmitter that plays a role in the science of motivation is dopamine. Dopamine's chemical signal gets passed from one neuron to the next, and between those two neurons, dopamine interacts with various receptors inside the synapse. For motivation specifically, it matters which pathway dopamine takes. The mesolimbic pathway, which comes from the middle of the brain and branches to various places like the cerebral cortex, is the most important reward pathway in the brain. One of the mesolimbic stops is the nucleus accumbens. Increased dopamine in the nucleus accumbens signals feedback for predicting rewards. Your brain recognizes that something important, good or bad, is about to happen, thus triggering motivation to do something. But now here's the big question. How do you do that? Do you actually have any control over your own dopamine levels? Or is this all just behind the scenes brain magic? How do we remain motivated to pursue goals when the gratification is days, months, or years in the future? A lot of people talk about dopamine as this thing that you get when you publish the book or when you get the book deal or when something wonderful happens, like your child's born, and that's true. But dopamine's main role is to be released anytime you achieve a milestone or you think you're on the right path. The dopamine system takes the norepinephrine, which is normally rate limiting. Dopamine can push that noradrenaline back down, that adrenaline back down, and give you more room, more space to do duration path and outcome work, highly focused work. Mm -hmm. The answer lies in the dopamine systems. They are tightly connected to the prefrontal cortex, PFC, that does the decision-making. More than any other part, the you part of your brain is your PFC. The dopamine system is tightly connected to the PFC through the mesocortical pathway. 
The pleasure and motivation machine, which is the dopamine system, acts in harmony with cortical and the limbic systems. Within the PFC, the ventromedial PFC, the emotional, and the dorsolateral PFC, the logical, act as two sides of a coin. If the PFC is the engine, dopamine is like the fuel that generates the combustion. If you can manage your dopamine system, you can manage your motivation. So when we are on the right path and we hit a milestone, dopamine is released and it tends to tighten our focus more for that activity. The dopamine system is tethered to those states of focus. And it's what mother nature designed so that the neural plasticity would occur and you would want to continue those behaviors again in the future. The best part of a weekend holiday is the planning and building up to it. Yeah, sure, you had a great time. But in terms of the dopamine released, the peak was the buildup, not the actual holiday. If you remember that dopamine's main job is to motivate, this makes a lot of sense. Why would you go through all the hassle and bother of planning the trip, making reservations, packing the bag, coordinating chores, and the rest, if you weren't motivated and pushed to take action? That push comes from the dopamine for the purpose of reaching the imagined reward. If you were to ask very hard workers who still enjoy it their secret to you, you would most likely hear very wise words, but not the core reason. To get the real answer, you have to ask a question, not to the person, but to their brain. Dopamine gets you out of bed and keeps you going. Because the PFC and the dopamine centers of the brain are connected through the mesocortical pathway, the way you think about a certain type of task actually affects how much dopamine is released, and naturally, how motivated you are to pursue that task. This is why coaching works. Visualize the dream. This is why bonus and other compensation systems work. Imagine what you could buy. This is why startups work. Imagine the exit. This is, to a certain extent, how life works. We are always motivated by a future reward. People think of the dopamine system as this kind of like catch-all for reward. Oh, you get likes on Instagram and it makes you feel good. That's not really how it works. And the important thing to understand is when you start getting a convergence of norepinephrine, so that level of agitation, duration path outcome, acetylcholine, and dopamine, now you're starting to wire in the behaviors that make people really good at certain things. If you found the video informative, then hit the like button, comment your thoughts down, and share to spread the word. Also a sub to the channel would be motivating. Just wait, we also have over 200 videos to watch, just click left or right. Keep inspiring.